What's up, people? It's your girl, Adela. First of all, thanks to everybody that was concerned about me in the last episode. You guys are so nice. Thank you so much. I'm doing so much better. The jet lag is gone. It meant somebody. And, you know, I've just not had mosquito bite in some years, so I was not prepared. I never expected it. I never expected it. Thank you. You too, right? I mean, even my brother did not expect it. Anyway, <laughs> Kat, on the other hand, was taking malaria medication the whole time, so she was fine. She was prepared. Me, I was forming strong African child. The moment the malaria hits me like this, I was like, ah, father. Anyway, huge shout out to everybody that participated in the 2020 Lagos Marathon. O'Shea, people from so many countries. First place got $50,000, second place $40,000, third place $30,000. Although, to be fair, if you are a Nigerian and you participate, it doesn't matter your position. The first Nigerian to finish gets $8,000. That is 3 million naira. And the second Nigerian to finish gets 2 million naira. The third gets 1 million naira. So thank you to the organizers for that. And as usual, no Nigerian won the marathon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for 31 year old Kenyan runner, David Bamasai tomorrow. Congratulations, my brother. He got $70,000. Oh, shit, that is like 25 million naira, my people. They added $20,000 to his 50,000 for breaking record. I said, my brother. And um, the first woman to finish is also a Kenyan, 35 year old Sharon Cherub. Congratulations, my sister. Since the marathon, I've been telling people that I'm from Kenya, okay? <laughs> Honestly, huge shout out to my Kenyan people, my Ethiopian people. You guys don't play. Uh -uh, they just come to Nigeria and they just clear the whole money. As every year, it's like free money for my East African people. <laughs> In fact, in some cases, the first 15 people to finish would be Kenyans and Ethiopians. And I'm like, why are the Nigerians? Kenyans and Ethiopians win the Boston Marathon, by the way. <laughs> they also clear the Boston Marathon. So not just Lagos Marathon. Honestly, Nigerians, you need to start preparing way ahead of the marathon. You don't wait for the marathon to arrive before you start preparing. You don't wait for two weeks to the marathon. I think a lot of people have conditioned their mind to believe that Nigerians cannot win marathons. But they can actually win marathons if they start training ahead of time. Like, you can go to East Africa and just stay there the whole year training if it's about the air in East Africa. <laughs> Nigerians can also win this. I mean, look at the Nigerian couple that came first among Nigerians. You know, the first Nigerian man, the first Nigerian woman. They're actually a couple from Jaws, Nigeria. So between them, they should be winning five million naira. <laughs> so if these people should keep training, training hard the whole year before the next marathon, I believe that they can also win the marathon. So we have the ability and I just would like to encourage Nigerians. This thing is happening in your country. It's an opportunity for you to win big money. Please take advantage of it because if you do not, my East African brothers and sisters will continue to take advantage of what is right to bend your nose. Eh? Believe it or not, this marathon creates job opportunities for so many people. Like a lot of business owners will make lots of money uh, when the event is happening. Uh, airlines would make money because people were coming in, people at the airport, you know what I mean? Like, so this creates job opportunities, it, it creates business opportunities. So I would like to encourage other banks to also please create, so also create other competitions besides the marathon. Let's do something else as well. While this is happening keep the marathon as it is but let's also have other competitions where nigerians will have better chance <laughs> to win such huge amount of money i mean there's no job and they just ban okada so ilule we, we need the money people need money like sprint races or something or basketball or afro music competition Ooh, fads. once again congratulations to david tumor of kenya and uh, also abraham keep tom of kenya who has won it twice i mean my brother <laughs> you guys should not forget your girl when you are spending this money it is a lot of money don't forget your girl you guys not don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real <laughs> So I'm sure that you guys heard that uh, Trump's government has banned Nigeria, Eritrea, Sudan, Tanzania, and some other countries from getting immigrant visas. I'm like, my father and my God, what just happened? A lot of Nigerians living in Nigeria, I see them online praising Trump for banning Nigeria. They love him. I don't know why. <laughs> Despite that, his immigrant wife enjoyed this benefit. Her parents also enjoyed this benefit. I find it interesting that a president who is married to an immigrant is now hurting a lot of families. Is there are so many Nigerians who are American citizens that were hoping to bring their spouses or their children or their parents to the US and that's no longer possible. Families have been separated right now. Imagine not being able to be with your child unless you quit your job in America to go back to start all over just to keep your family. I mean, it's heartbreaking and they can't just apply for visiting visa because once they know that your spouse is an American citizen, they deny you visiting visa. They say apply for immigrant visa. This is also basically telling 
all international students in America from any of these countries that were burned, that once you're done with your studies, there's no path to residency in America for you. And that is indirectly saying that there's no point trying to get a job in the U.S. after your studies. And the same thing applies for uh, professionals like doctors and nurses. The excuse that America gave is that Nigeria failed to comply with security and information sharing requirements and that Nigeria is not a high terror risk to the U.S. I mean, we all know that Nigeria has security issues, but I don't think that that's a good excuse to prevent families from being together. According to the United States Census Bureau, 4% of Nigerians hold a PhD. That, folks, is compared to 1% of the general U.S. population. They're way ahead. Also, 17% of Nigerians hold a master's degree and 37% have bachelor's degrees. Nigerian Americans, folks, they are the most educated ethnic group in the United States. Now, speaking of security in Nigeria, it's such a shame because we've been talking about this for a long time. We've been shouting about this for years, but our government kept saying it's not that bad. I'm sure you guys saw the presidential spokesperson, Femi Adesino, in an interview with um, Channels TV. Despite the reversals in security, it is still not as bad as it used to be in this country. Ah, father, yes, yes, I cannot, I can't help you. There, 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 there were... Oh, see your life, see your life. Hey, 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 hey. That is how people do when they're about to lie. There was a time that there were five, six, ten bombings in a day. Ah, oh my dear, she no father. Hey, see, there were long, there were long, Cosima. We know what the situation was as of 2015. And we know what it is today. You see what I'm saying? Besides lying to us, he now tells us that it is the journalists that paint it as if it is bad. But things have gone really bad, Mr. Adishino. Not In the Northeast, terribly bad. Mr. Not, not as bad as you want to make it seem. No, not what? Not me. It is what it's you. It is you. It is you. How because is it me, Mr. millions of Nigerians are listening to you. They are watching you, and they may tend to believe what you are saying. But the situation is not as bad as you make it want to see. Ha! They say, ah, they say we are in trouble. But you know, the moment America said that there is no security in Nigeria, he did not argue. In fact, the same man released a long statement on how they are working on it, and this clown set up a committee. A they set up a committee to work on America's requirement. I said, ah, <laughs> the devil is a liar. When it is your citizens that are complaining, we are just making it up. But when America says it, suddenly it is legit. Wow. So, so guess what they did after that? They slashed the Nigerian visa fees for American citizens into half. <laughs> What is that supposed to teach us? So you think doing that will make America change its mind? Ah, you guys are so funny. Honestly, Nollywood needs to start recruiting some of our politicians. <laughs> Meanwhile, huge kudos to the G.O. of Redeemed Christian Church of God for organizing a prayer walk because of security issues in Nigeria. The body of Christ called Khan and PFN has called this prayer walk and that's what we intend to do this morning. And our Father in the Lord, also, we'll be taking a walk just to do a prayer walk, leading the headquarters church, the redeemed Christian church of God here, uh, through the streets of this particular church. I'm like, oh my God, finally, I was so happy to see that. Although when I saw it, I thought it was a protest. I thought he was leading a protest because they were carrying placards. <laughs> I didn't know that you carry placards for prayer work. That's just me. I, I never knew. Whatever it is, though, I'm just glad that someone like him is finally taking a stand. I just wish that they did this before the can leader and thousands of others were killed. Jesus, in his time, stood with the people. He stood for what was right. We need more influential men of God in Nigeria to use their influence to speak up against the atrocities going on in the country. One of the things he said is that any Muslim that, that is murdered in this nation, you are, I mean, you have murdered... Um, a prospective brother and if you kill a christian then they have killed a brother if you kill a sister a christian sister they have killed a sister amen somebody also an alleged boko haram member was caught with explosives inside the toilet of a living faith church in kaduna and his name is nathaniel sambo which is now causing controversy because a lot of people are like ah he's a christian christians are also terrorists 
me i don't think that terrorism is limited to any religion so at the same time though some people are now saying that oh it's a made-up story they think that maybe someone put him up to it i don't know but this guy is clearly educated from the way he was speaking this is him telling his side of the story my name is nathaniel samuel i was listening to the sermon from the man of god I had a stomach ache, so I decided to go and use the toilet. I was holding a bag which contained some of my items. They suspected the items to be explosive, but they discovered that they are not explosive. They are just mere fireworks for decoration. However, the police said he changed his narrative. And the deep uh, sabotage is here with you. So why are you changing the story? No, Tell not, them the truth. Yes, sir, I'm not really changing the truth. Now, the surprising thing is him later saying that he was not aware of what's in his bag. Do you know what the, what the devices are? I don't, I, I don't really know until after my bag was being searched that I got to understand no, that. do you know what the devices are, even as it is now? Right now? Yes. Yeah. As in what are they? They are explosives. Okay. Really? Who who do you, like, how do you not know what's in your bags? Who do you guys believe, you know? The fact remains that he had explosives, even if it's fireworks. And I have no idea how you decorate with fireworks or explosives or why you would have them in the church. Meanwhile, the widows of some slain soldiers are protesting the fact that the federal government of Nigeria, they want to release another 608 so-called repentant terrorists. These were people responsible for the death of their husbands. And the government now says that, oh, they've repented. Let me know what you guys think about Nigerian government releasing repentant terrorists. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> to Senegal. Huge shout out to these elderly women who are taking charge of their lives, taking charge of their health by participating in a fitness program taking place right by the beach, girl. And guess what? It is working wonders for them. <laughs> Where to go, my mother? You know, that's amazing. Some of these women had health challenges and now they're doing okay. Wow. You know what? He was shout out to their coach and he's just volunteering. Honestly, exercising is very important. If you're following me on Instagram, you know I talk a lot about exercising. Ha! Follow me if you're not following me. Have you followed? I'm waiting. Okay. So my brothers and sisters, <laughs> get your body move, yo. I'm serious. You have only one body. If you don't take good care of it, there's no spare body for you to use. But jokes aside, even walking, walking for 30 minutes a day can do wonders in one's life. You don't have to go to the gym. Just start by walking every day and you'll see how your health would improve. And if your goal is to lose weight, that would also happen. And if this elderly woman can do it, what's your excuse? Like for real, you guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real. Whoa, whoa! Aren't you forgetting something, Cat? Why are you on my set? The summit. What summit? That summit. Oh, that summit! Yeah. Oh my goodness, guys! I am so sorry. Thank you for reminding me. You're the best. Hi, oh my goodness, guys, I am so sorry. But the 2020 US Africa Global Summit in Dallas, Texas is coming up. And since you're here, madam, and you have already invited my show, why don't you tell them about the summit? Uh, hi, guys. There's a summit in Dallas this April hosted by the African Chamber of Commerce, where you can have exclusive access to key African and global leaders and business decision makers. You can network and forge new business partnerships, obtain information for the latest trade and investment opportunities, and make valuable connections, obtain peer-to-peer -peer advice on investing in Africa, and make new deals or close pending ones. Like seriously, do you have to, you don't need to, I'm so sorry guys, you don't need to speak big grammar. Why don't you just say what it is? I'm so sorry, all she's trying to say, my people, is that the US Africa Global Summit and Awards event is where big money meets your big ideas. So yeah, so if you're an African with business startups, with invention, or you have a business but you don't have the capital, you know you have business, you don't have capital, this is where you need to 
be because investors are coming to this summit looking for ideas or businesses to invest in. It's like the Shark Tank for Africans. That's Indiana. exactly what I meant. So why didn't you say it? There will be keynote presentations, panel discussions, group and private meetings, mm -hmm. and networking participants engage in the most important issues affecting business on the African continent. That, that is better. You are starting to speak regular. Don't speak regularly, my dear. But you guys, make sure that you register. And yes, you can come from outside the US as well for this event because you will also hear from leading global and African industry experts on the best practices for business, security, trade, and investment in Africa. And of course, there will be awards and recognition for trailblazers. Oh, shit. And if you come early, you get to hang out with our very own Dr. Ari Kana. Yes, the people's choice of African ambassador to the US. And if you need one more reason to come, I mean, your girl will be there. <laughs> I'll be attending. I'll be there on the 15th. I'll be emceeing the event that day. Uh, once again, it's April 15th to 17th. Make sure you register on Eventbrite or send them an email. Will you be there, Kat, for this event? Woo! Will you be there for this I event? I don't know. You don't, what do you mean you don't? Oh my goodness, Kat. I'm so sorry, guys. You see what I have to do with you? How can you say you don't know? I don't know. You are breaking hearts right now because I have a feeling some people are more interested oh. in coming just to meet you than to meet me. But you broke hearts. Anyway, I need to sign out now. Go, get out of my show. Let me sign out. All right, yo. <laughs> It's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to this music, yeah, you do that. Until next time, I'm gonna see you later. Peace out.